Payne. Thomas Payne. Thomas Payne. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. And remember this. Democracy never lasts long. It soon wastes exhausts, and murders itself. There never was a democracy yet that did not commit suicide. That from John Adams back in 1777. Good morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America. Followed by a patriot. Come on, patriots. I need you to call today with the pledge. Good morning. And a good, good morning to you and yours. I'm Zeb Bell. Zeb at the Ranch on this Tuesday, September 1st. Brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations serving you with a very safe, clean environment and, of course, the best in tires. And don't forget our sponsors of Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back back to being you. Right now, let's go to the phone line and have our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning. Sean, do we have anybody there or we got a deadline? Do we have Sean or do we have a deadline? <laughs> I don't know. Hello, hello, hello over at the station. Do we have a Pledge of Allegiance person? I don't know what's happening, folks. Uh, uh, somebody call 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. And uh, I don't know if we've had a power bump and we're off the air or what, but I'll continue to broadcast. And Adrian on the air to do the pledge. Well, what was the delay, please? Uh, main mic was, wasn't on the right one. All right. Well, let's go quickly uh, with the Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. You're on the air quickly. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Adrian. I've got to run and get some other stuff caught up. We've had a couple of minutes delay. Thank you. God bless you for your call. And right now, we're going to go right smack dab to the weather forecast, and it's brought to you by KNR Rental at 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Don't forget, they've got the best of tools and equipment for you and any job, any construction project, so please give them a call if you have questions. They're located right there on the Burley Paul Highway, 6783 Three one two two, and now here's the weather. Cooler temperatures for today, but we will be warming up as we make our way towards the Labor Day weekend. Here's a look at your weather. We are expecting sunny skies, a little bit of a breeze out of the west at about five miles an hour. Expecting a high of 74 tonight. Clear skies with a low of 48 tomorrow. Winds picking up just a little bit out of the southwest at about 10 miles an hour. Expecting a high of 87. Clear skies for tomorrow night with a low of 52 as we look ahead towards Thursday. Sunny skies, high of 89, Friday 91, and Saturday mid 90. That's a look at your weather. Four, seven, three. Oh, Gina, I appreciate it. And the weather, of course, brought to you by K&R Rental at 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Roger and the crew, they get there early in the morning because they know you got a job to do and you want to get it done with the best of tools and equipment on a, both a long- and short-term rental at K&R Rental on the Burley Paul Highway. Number to call, 6783122. Caller, I'll be right with you. Do not go away. Promise I'll take your call in just a moment. I want to 
remind everybody, too, about our friends at Daryl's Cleaners. Kevin and Cindy have helped me for a long, long time with making sure that all my clothes look good. When I was on the rodeo trail full time, I mean, man, I'd go down there every other week when I flew back into town, hand them a great big bag of rumply crumplies, and they'd come back looking brand spanking new. Daryl's Cleaners at 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. And uh, if you don't have time to do your washing, they can do that too. Wash, dry, fold, you betcha, just like Mama used to make. And uh, Daryl's Cleaners, 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. Quick note, too, that uh, these folks started early this morning, and that's, of course, Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Number to call for all your heating, cooling, and electrical needs, 678-0459. And they have the honor of celebrating almost seven complete decades of serving you. Open 730 to 5 Monday through Friday, where they have every day warm winters, cool summers for for you, Ramsey Heating and Electric. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Deb. You know, the first thing I'm going to do is get me an airline ticket to Philadelphia, and then I'm going to go to one of those coal mines and go down 2,000 feet, and when I come back up, I'm going to know how to run a computer. Oh, really? I didn't said I could. <laughs> Why do you say that, that you'll know how to run a computer? You're, you're losing me, Keith. Come on, help me quick. Well, because I don't know how to run one now, but he said if you can go down the mine 2,000 feet, you can learn how to run a computer. Uh-huh. So I'm... I'm just excited about it. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I don't like computers, and I know a lot of people are going to wrinkle their nose at me on this. I don't like computers. I don't like to be on a computer. I don't know that much about computers. I don't want to learn anything about computers. I hate it. I find it time-wasting to sit there and look at a screen. That's my attitude. And as far as going down a mine shaft 2,000 feet, not on your best day, Buckwheat. Never. I got claustrophobia, and I could not do that. Well, I guess I'm just going to remain illiterate. Okay. Well, listen, I appreciate your bringing everything to light this morning. God bless you, Keith. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you in a little bit. i got another call waiting. All right. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, caller number two, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I have just uh, one little comment here. Uh, I'd like to know what's causing the pastors for not getting into politics uh, because from where I'm sitting if they don't the Bible will soon be substituted for by the communist Manifesto. I'm going to tell you right now that uh, I don't care whose feathers I ruffle. I know that many, many pastors are too afraid and too cowardly to get up in the pulpit and talk about today's problems and take a little time and effort and equate that to the Bible verses and prophecy that is in the Bible. And uh, I, I really feel like pastors and church leaders are not, underline the word not, doing their job. Job. I am not saying all, but I'm encompassing many into that statement. Well, they need to take advantage of the fact that we've got a, a president up there that's uh, part General George Patton and Teddy Roosevelt, and they better take advantage of it. Well, it's about high time the pastor stood up and realized that with this so-called pandemic and the closures of many churches, people are straying away from church when it's at a time we need more religion, we need more faith, we need more prayer, and it's about high time the pastors really told the flock what's going on and what Christians need to do to fight back, and they're not doing this. That's right. The pastors don't realize how much power that they have. And it is being wasted because of fear. Well, let me tell you something. I put the call out to every pastor in this area. Every one. 
And only one responded to come on my program, and that was Pastor Paul Thompson of Twin Falls. I am absolutely ashamed of the ministerial associations in other towns and areas that would not call and try to be a part of a program that I absolutely am a believer. I will not put them any corners whatsoever, but they didn't have the gumption to call. Tony, what more can I do? Well, Antifa and Black Lives Matter are going to take over if they don't stop showing courage and give courage to the people that are attending church. Well, you're right, but I had a congregation uh, member tell me, this has been about six, seven months ago, that uh, this particular person confronted their pastor about, why don't you call the Zeb Bell Show, and why don't you come on and talk a little bit about, oh, well, they kind of sniffed and hawed about me. That's cowardice, and it's not doing your job as a pastor and a leader in the community. Well, this is how communism gets started and takes over because people are sitting on their fat butts doing nothing. I'm going to lump those members of those various churches in that same sentence. I appreciate you, Tony, and God bless you for all your calls. I mean that. You you always do a good job. Well, you stay on the phone. Just keep right on stroking because we're with you out here. Yeah, and I'm going to say it again. Any and all pastors that want to come on my program and talk about what's going on today and talk about theology, etc., you're more than welcome. You've got an open door. Use it. Don't be a coward. There you go, Tony. Okay, thank you very much. All right, God bless you, man. Thanks. Calls welcome, 436-22-441-866-927-4587. Standby caller, Dino Septic Service. My, 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 my. Fast, friendly service serving you. And they've got all the fancy new equipment. You know, they've got the cameras that will go down into the pipes and survey the problem and literally find the problem, and then they know how to fix it. I tell you, these people are good. Septic tank pump septic tanks and drain fields installed, backhoe services, everything. Sewer and sink drain lines clean, Dino Septic Service, 436-6526 or 678-1638. You bet the best. Serving you, Dino's Septic Service. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Well, I think a lot of the pastors have been neutralized, and uh, unfortunately, a lot of this... The whole problem is is that, you know, people, Marxist theology has been embedded into our churches. And, you know, there's old saying that uh, Christians don't become communists, but communists become pastors and ministers. Unfortunately, that's true. And Marx, of course, Zeb said that religion was the Christian Judeo-Christian religion was the opiate of the people and had to be destroyed. Yeah, so anyway, um, this is what's going on. It's, you know, clear back, uh, what made this country great was the flaming righteousness coming from the pulpits of the churches. That was with Alex de Tokyo when he came over in the 1830s from France to find out why America was such a great country. It was because of the the ministers and the pastors at the flaming righteousness being preached from the pulpit. Well, hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Adrian, Adrian, listen to me. Uh, We have a time constraint. I can't have you just go on. I need to interject and also make some points here. I have said for a long time on my program that pastors, I'm giving them a forum. I'm giving them a forum so that their congregate members and others can hear them. We need to start talking about the ills in society, and there is no one better to talk about the ills and the curing through Christianity or religion through the Bible than having an open forum, but they won't take it. Well, that's unfortunate, but it's, uh, it's the day we live in, and people, I'm sorry, just... You see how people are cowered down from accepting a lot of the lies? I'd like to switch subject. Maybe you want me to call back, but sometimes anyway. Well, I I haven't got a lot of time. Just be very poignant and brief and tell me what the other subject is quickly. Well, the biggest problem we have is just people are so neutralized to accept, you know, lies and distortions. And the ministers and pastors, unfortunately, have fallen for this, too. And I've got a friend.
friend that just, you know, you see all of a sudden these COVID-19 numbers have just jumped, jumped, jumped. Well, why is that? Because the hospitals are getting paid $35,000 if the person dies. I have a friend that's relative died of cancer. The death certificate says COVID-19. Now, this is going on here in Idaho. And so the hospitals have found a cash cow and, and on this kind of a situation, Zeb. And it's, it's wrong, and it needs to be exposed. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Your uh, call on that. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait. I have I've got a commercial break I've got to get in. It's a segment that I'm going to be doing next week, but uh with my own personal experiences right now this last 2 weeks. The last thing I want to talk about are hospitals. So thank you Adrian. God bless you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, anyway, we we got a serious problem, you know. Figures don't lie, but liars figure and that's exactly what's been going on. Only 6% of the people that die actually die of COVID-19. All right. Thank you. 94% die with it. Thank you very much. So, anyway, you have a great All right, buddy. Thank you very much. Appreciate your call. Uh, yeah, with my situation with my wife, and uh, I'm not going to say a whole lot about it this morning. The last thing I want to talk about are hospitals. So let that subject uh, go by the wayside today, please. Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland in Burley and 291 Pole Line Road in Twin Falls. Don't forget, they are, they are America's Diner. And you talk about delicious food items. You go in there, let's say you're going in for breakfast, and you sit down, open the menu, and you go, whew, I'll never never be able to make a decision that all looks so good and it is lunch dinner all the desserts everything and really nice people nice folks serving you at denny's restaurant 611 north overland and burley and it's really really true america's diner calls are welcome 436-224-1866-927-4587 yeah i want to just say one more thing about this uh, of all the times that I asked, actually there were two pastors, and I want to thank both of them, uh, Bear Morton from Twin Falls and also Paul Thompson from Twin Falls uh, abs- absolutely took my invitation to come on the program, but that's shameful. That's shameful that only two out in the listening audience would say, you bet, I'd like to come on and talk about not only my church, but I'd like to talk about what's going on in society today. Pastors? Do your job. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. The question is, should we frack or not frack? And we got a guy that's running for president who can't remember what he had for breakfast, and then he says he's going to frack, and then he says he's not going to. What the heck is he? Well, Biden is in a land all by himself. Uh, He said yesterday that, and he emphasized the word not, he emphasized the word not when he said, I've never said and I'm not saying that we're going to do away with fracking. Well, Joe's a liar. Let's call the spade as it is. Joe is a liar because I've got a tape right here at my desk that a few months ago he said that, Absolutely, he would do away with fossil fuels and fracking. Joe Biden is nothing more than a uh, almost 50-year politician that's lost his mind. Well, I had a boss tell me one time, don't confuse me with the facts. My mind is made up. Yeah, I guess. And that is Joe Biden. I'm fed up with this. You know, the attacks on Trump, I understand. I'm not a, uh, I'm a big boy, and I got big boy pants on, and I understand politics, and I understand how they want to go out, Keith, and they want to destroy the other person's image in the public, and uh, they are trying to get the vote. I understand that. But I am sick and tired of the lies and the liberal stupid attitude of the Democrats. Everything is blame Trump. Everything. I don't like I said yesterday and I wasn't exaggerating. If there's a cat up in a tree that can't get down, that's Trump's fault. And even in the Times News, every week the redundancy and the squeaky wheel of Jim Jones, a guy that absolutely I am so fed up with his op ed pieces against Trump, against Trump, against Trump. He's like a squeaky wheel that nobody can find the oil can you're absolutely right but but Biden has only been out one day out in the sunlight 
and look what he has done. <laughs> it kind of a it kind of a radiant glow, huh? Back into that basement. <laughs> He's like Puxatani Phil. <laughs> oh Lord. Yeah, he's seen it, and uh, I think he's seen seen the sunshine. He said. I don't like it. I'm going back in my face. Yeah, he, he saw his shadow and he scurried underneath the door. I agree with you, Keith. Hey, man, thanks for making me laugh a little bit this morning. I needed that. Thank you very much. <laughs> but just go down 2,000 feet and you come back up, you're going to be a computer specialist. The first of all, the problem is trying to get me to go down 2,000 feet. No, not going to happen. Thanks, Keith. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> I don't like that kind of stuff. Uh, calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Yeah, I've got the, the newspaper of the story this morning. I mean, uh, Joe Biden, Trump is to blame. Now, that's an all-encompassing statement. Trump is to blame is the headline. And then he says in the subheadline, President tries to keep focus on law and order away from pandemic. No, I don't think so. Anybody that's got the common sense of a billy goat can remember every day, every week, Trump and Burks and Fauci and everybody on television at approximately four o'clock Eastern or four o'clock our time, six o'clock Eastern, would have updates on the pandemic and the coronavirus and everything else. And he's not trying to steer away from it in any way, shape, or form. I'm sick of this. And Biden, in the newspaper story, it says, Joe Biden condemned violence at recent protests Monday and blamed Trump as the battle over who's at fault and who can keep Americans safe. Are you kidding me? Here's a little mole, a mole that emerged into the light, finally. And now Trump's to blame for all the violence? Really? Really? He says later on in the article, he can't stop the violence because for years he's fomented it. Really? Is the American public that gullible that they can't see through this stupidity put forth by the Democrats and Joe Biden? Joe, stay in the basement. Read some old life magazines. And don't run for president. Cancel out. Please. Ay, ay, ay. Calls welcome. 436 2244 1866 927 4587. Honestly, I was talking on the phone last night with a very, very dear friend of mine. And he had called and we were talking about my darling wife. And uh, we got on the subject after a little bit about politics with Joe Biden. And he used to be. A Democrat. And thank goodness he saw the light and was baptized and everything. But um, he used to be a Democrat. And he said, this is the most phony election ever by the most phony of candidates in the most phony of conditions. And I agree with him. Don't forget, hey, later on this morning, we're going to be talking to a very dear friend of mine, and that's Jerry Zollinger. I've got so much respect for that young man. And uh, they're going to have the 32nd annual production sale at Zollinger Quarter Horse Ranch on September 12th, starting with the preview at 10 o'clock in the morning, sale at 11, up at the ranch in Oakley at 1994 South, uh, 180 East of Oakley. I had to study there for a minute and look, and my printing is sometimes lacking. Uh, actually, my handwriting is pathetic. So I had, uh, it's 100 east of Oakley. There you go, 1994 south, 100 east of Oakley. <laughs> I tell you what, folks, just look for the ranch. I'm telling you, don't go by my coordinates. And you're talking about horses with minds that can think and talent and personality. These are top colts and fillies. You don't want to miss this sale. Zollinger Quarter Horse Ranch, 32nd annual, bit my tongue, 32nd annual production sale on September 12th. All right, time for you to give me a call, please, and uh, discuss anything you want to discuss, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. The Looney Tunes 
in our society, every day I get on my uh, daily caller and talk to my people back in Washington and New York, and some of the stories that are going on around the United States that maybe you wouldn't hear about on uh, ABC, CBS, NBC, whatever... But in the name of cowardice, this is what it has to be. I'm going to give you three examples of how our country is just going and falling apart at the seams. In the name of cowardice, and they said they were doing this to protect the statues of Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin, a university in Kansas said, oh, we're going to take them down. Now, they had been threatened... Uh, by mob rule on that campus that if you don't take down those statues of Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin, we're going to do this, that, and the other, and we're going to vandalize them. But the, the school came out with a press release that said, well, to protect the statues, we're going to take them down. Uh-huh. And then here's another one that shows how bad our society is becoming. A student group. Now, Please keep the word student right out at the end of your nose. Hold on, caller. A student group went to a city council meeting, and these kids demanded to the city council that all the police be fired in their community. Right now. Fire all the cops. And then in California... The students in California, K through 12, are going to be taught what they call the four eyes program. Like four eyes, the letter I. And it's a program of hating America because it's a country of white supremacists and condemning capitalism. Doesn't that make you feel warm and fuzzy? Caller, good morning. You're on the air. You know what's unequal, Zeb, is... Like Fox News, they will give Biden 30 minutes uninterrupted time yesterday, and then they gave President Trump time. But what other broadcasting company gives Trump equal time? I can't think of any. Little. Or not. No, no, I can't think of any. Uh, the Fox Broadcasting uh, and Fox News have been very, very generous to help Donald Trump and put him on the air, i.e. they have also done the same and or tried to do the same for Biden as far as interviews and everything, which uh, the little mole in the basement didn't want to come out into the light and shed any light on questions or answers. I agree with you. The others are... I listened to CNN the other night, that Don Lamont. That is one of the most ridiculous journalist broadcasters that I have ever listened to in my life. He is under the word pathetic. Okay, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but if you set me down in front of Biden, I could tie him up in knots. Oh. Just by asking him questions that he should know and give the right answer. Well, don't... Uh... Don't dis don't discredit yourself at all because uh, you are far 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 and away better and sharper than Joe Biden. Keith, I appreciate it. Now uh, you have a wonderful day. I've got another call waiting. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, sir. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. The menu at the Burley Senior Center today is meatloaf, mashed potatoes and gravy. Cream style corn, all the trimmings. And for five bucks, you can get one to go if you just call in. We need your participation. I'll tell you what, meatloaf and the spuds and everything, after what I have had to fix myself the last couple of weeks, sounds delicious at the Senior Center. Joe, God bless you. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. Have a great day. You betcha. That's at the Senior Center on Overland. Let's support our seniors. Stop over there and have lunch, please. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, sir. My friend. Hey, and I'd like to touch something on the senior centers real quick. Everybody out there that's got a garden, that's got produce that they can't use, 
take it to your senior centers. Donate it to them because they'll be more than glad to use it. Absolutely. I mean, that's one way to support them without, you know, digging in your pocketbook or going there eating. But any excess in your garden, that's one place to consider to take it. I like that idea. That's good. That's very good. Anyway, did you see on the news about these teachers are having parents sign that they cannot monitor what they're doing to these teaching the kids when they're <laughs> online? I Honest to goodness, when I heard that story, and uh, because of circumstances in my family, I haven't given uh, due diligence to a lot of stories, but I stopped and I said, parents, please think of what they're asking you to do. They're asking you to eliminate your parental prestige and powers and let them rule and dictate what your kids are doing. I know it. And, and every parent out there that has a kid in school should be up in arms about this because, like I've said before, that uh, saying I said, when you send your kids to Caesar to be educated, don't be surprised when they come back Roman. Well, the program that is being uh, started in California, it's called the Four Eyes Program. I don't know if you heard about it or not. No, but- I didn't. Well, it's a it's a program that is uh, bent on condemning capitalism and saying that America has been an oppressive nation, oppressive nation, and uh, basically condemnation about we're bad, we've got to change our ways, and it's up to the students, get this part of it, it's up to the students to realize all the badness of America and change it. I mean, I'm proud of this country. I'm proud of this country and what it's done. But these people in these school systems, especially the one in California with this Four Eyes program uh, based on teaching oppression and what America has done wrong, that's not teaching pride in our country. No, it isn't. It isn't. It is brainwashing, indoctrinating children, and when they get older, it'll be easy to take them over. You bet. They will vote things in that is not good for this country when they need to teach them true history because when you make mistakes in life most people try not to make the same mistake over again that's right and when history history isn't perfect i mean there was only one perfect person that walked this earth and they crucified him you know, I've always equated, and, and bear with me, and don't don't giggle at my analogy here, but I've always equated our growth in this nation as to a pre-teenager with a whole bunch of pimples on his face. And as he grows older, the pimples go away as he turns into an adult. As this country grew, it had a lot of pimples. We made a lot of mistakes. But now that we're in uh, in this business of being a country for over 250 years, we've got a pretty clean face, and we have overcome a lot of the problems. Wouldn't you agree? I would agree. I mean, we are not a racist country. America is not a race. America is a combination of That's right. several nationalities. It's a melting pot. It is. And people came here to be Americans. They came here because of the freedom, the, the opportunity to pursue something that they loved that they could make a living at. What was the country based on with our forefathers back in the 1700s? Quickly, what was the main theme of this country? I didn't know I was going to have a test. Well, you are, quickly. The was... Uh, to be able to worship. And freedom. Like freedom. Humanity. The simple freedom. word freedom, right? And then the Constitution and all the uh, amendments geared around that word, freedom. And why should we, after all the blood, sweat, tears, and lives, why should we revert away from that and listen to the stupid psychology of socialism? That's, that's, that's just it. And when these the government took over the schools, that's when we started going backwards with our education. Yeah, that's right. It is. Because yeah. Because the government
government doesn't want us to know true history. When I was in school, we was taught the Civil War was between the North and the South. But you look up true history, it was between Republicans and Democrats. And when the nation was formed, had they said, we are no slaves, there's no slaves, the South would have not come along with it. Yeah. So they made concessions to the South to get them in the Union. Can you think... And then, years later, when Abraham Lincoln come along, we tried to cure the slavery, and we did. Yeah. We stopped it. You know, when you think about what happened back in the 1860s with the Civil War... And you think about all the changes and all the progression that has happened in this country. Barack Obama, a black president. Eric Holder, black attorney general. I mean, the list goes on and on. And right now, one of the greatest senators that they're touting could be a great president, Tim Scott, black man. I, I'm, I'm so sick and tired of hearing about oppression and there's no hope and they have no opportunity. Are you kidding me? LeBron James could buy almost the whole state of Maine and, and Idaho at the same time. He's such a multimillionaire. I am sick and tired of hearing the crybaby attitude of, oh, we've been put, held under the white man's thumb. That is a bunch of bogus, and you know it. It is exactly right, and we hear that every two to four years when election time comes up. I, I tell people out there, okay, look at the history. Who freed the slaves? Was it the Republicans or the Democrats? Who let them vote? Was it the Republicans or Democrats? Who given citizenship? Republicans or Democrats? And Republicans overwhelmingly voted for it, and very, very few, if any, Democrats voted for those. You know, when you think about it, though, let's use a football game, uh, an NFL game as an analogy here, real quick, and I'm running way late. Yeah. You get 22 guys on the field, 11 on defense, 11 on offense. Do you realize that almost 85% are blacks? And that tells me, in rough, rough round figures, that out of the 22 guys on the field, defense and offense at the same time, we're talking about uh, at least 17 to 18 millionaires playing football that are black on the field at the same time. Exactly. And, and they want to take a kneel for this country for oppression. Well, I understand that they, they feel they need to do something. But my deal is, put your money where your mouth is. Amen. Are you on the streets trying to stop it, or are you just doing it on the football field for some recognition? There you go. Hey, quick, I've got to run. i got to get a weather forecast in. Give me your great spiel for the seniors. All right, everybody, let's go eat at the senior centers. Support them if you can. Donate to them. Go have some meatloaf, and you'll leave with a full tummy and a full heart. I love that. Nobody says it better. Thank you, Doug. Don't forget our weather forecast brought to you right now by Mount Harrison Audiology, and they know that hearing loss affects each person in a different way. That's right, but they have all the diagnostic skills and personalized treatment plans and all the latest of technology to help your hearing at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. How do you get a hold of them? Easy. Call them at 312-0957, 312-0957, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, right behind the Minidoka Hospital, across from the emergency room. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. Cooler temperatures for today, but we will be warming up as we make our way towards the Labor Day weekend. Here's a look at your weather. We are expecting sunny skies, a little bit of a breeze out of the west at about 5 miles an hour. Expecting a high of 74 tonight, clear skies with a low of 48 tomorrow. Winds picking up just a little bit out of the southwest at about 10 miles an hour, expecting a high of 87. Clear skies for tomorrow night with a low of 52 as we look ahead towards Thursday. Sunny skies, high of 89, Friday 91, and Saturday midnight. Thank you, Gina. I appreciate that. And don't forget, folks, if you've noticed the diminishment in your hearing, don't let it go. Please. They help me. They can help you at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Number to call, 312-0957. 
Calls are welcome and appreciated at 436-224-1866-927-4587. I'd appreciate hearing from you. And uh, before I go any further, I've also got to tell you a little bit about Barry Equipment and Rental. I really, really enjoy these folks when they come on the air with us on occasion. Barry Equipment and Rental Sales Service and Parts, three locations to serve you at 159 West Highway 30 in Burley, 465 Addison Avenue West in Twin, and, of course, the Napa location. And when it comes to jobs of lifting and digging and pushing and carrying, you want the equipment that's going to get the job done. They've got all the bobcats. They've got all the trenchers and the scissor lifts. They've got all the Doosan wheel loaders and the excavators. They've got excellent lease plans, great finance plans to buy. What are you waiting for? Get a hold of them today. Barry Equipment and Rental in Burley, Twin Falls, and Napa. All right, give me a jingle, 436-224-1866-927-4587. I, just a quick note, I saw this in the paper, and I thought it deserved maybe a quick mention in Darwin, Australia. How would you like to be at the Outback Tourist Destination? It's a great big tourist trap in Australia. And they have a lot of outdoor experiences. You know, you leave the resort, and they take the guides, take you out, show you all the black mamba snakes and everything else. Well, they caught at the Outback Tourist Destination, and this would make me want to stay in my room with the doors locked. They caught a a 14-and-a-half-foot crocodile that weighed 770 pounds. Fourteen and a half feet, 770 pounds. Oh, what a great outback tourist destination that would be. What a great vacation. What did you do on your honeymoon? Well, we ran away from a 770-pound crocodile. Oh, my goodness. There's a picture of it in the paper on a wagon. Now, picture a basketball net 10 feet up in the air. And then add four and a half feet to that, and that would be that crocodile. Woo! 770 pounds. All right, give me a call, 436-224-1866-927-4587. I'd like to hear from you. Uh, Homeland Security. Yeah, for those of you, <clears throat> for those of you that have not heard about this, they've had enough with Mayor Ted Wheeler in Portland, and they've given him a kind of a verdict that if you don't stop this nonsense of over ninety days, over three months of burning, looting, and destruction in Portland and endangering all the citizens, we're coming in. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. You know, your friend Doug and. All your other good, great listeners who have wisdom like Doug does. Now, that really went home to me when he talked about the senior centers this morning. How many of us have a cornfield that they raised and they have beautiful corn, but now it's come ripe all of a sudden? And what are you going to do with it? Well, yeah, there's sweet corn, and there's all kinds of uh, the potatoes, and uh, there's so many things that are raised, tomatoes in the gardens and everything. And like if a person just took a tenth of it, a tenth of it, and gave it to the senior centers, oh, the money that they would save and how grateful they would be. Well, I got some beautiful, I mean beautiful, uh, Walla Walla onions. Oh, boy. If you've ever tasted one, yep. you'll never go back to anything else. You know, it's interesting, Keith. It's interesting about Walla Walla sweets. Uh, Every time I happen to get a hold of one, I'll cut them about a quarter inch thick and put them on a cheeseburger or something. Now, I agree a lot of people don't like to be around me after I do this, but I sure enjoy the taste of them. Oh, it's the most wonderful thing. You know, and if you wanted to, you could just eat it like an apple and it doesn't burn or anything else. Oh, yeah. It's the most amazing thing. But the one downside of it is 
they do not store because they have so much water in them. I see. Well, you know, there's a lot of things we can do to help other people, and uh, there are a lot of people that do need help. Keith, God bless you. Thank you for your call again. That's a good idea. A, Thank you. I've got a plum tree that's just loaded with plums. Okay. And anybody that wants to come and get some, they do so. Well, that's plum nice. Call me first. That's plum nice. Thank you. I appreciate it. God bless you, Keith. Thank you. Bye. Uh, calls welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. You know, there was a guy that called the other day, and I admit that the last two weeks I have not been in the best of moods. And uh, he said, what are you talking about, mail-in balloting? He said, that's as safe as anything else. And I said, no, it's not. Well, you don't know what you're talking about. I said, yes, I do. And just yesterday, yesterday, major New York newspaper and a journalist that talked to the Democratic operative that wanted to remain anonymous. Naturally, he's scared to death for doing what he did. He's kind of leaking a story with verification of honesty about the story said that the Democratic Party and the liberals in general have absolutely a plan, a plan to really disrupt mail-in balloting and make it a total fraud. I'm not making this up. I'm not making this up. He told the reporter how easy, how absolutely easy the Democrats have planned for mail-in voting to be falsified. And he he gave certain instances. He said a lot of uh, people are already geared up and ready to go to various senior centers under the guise of helping people make sure they get their ballots in and then taking the ballot from the senior and saying, listen, I know you have a hard time holding the pen. I'll fill it out for you. And they do. Oh, boy, do they ever. And then they talked about how they take the envelopes and they steam them open and literally change the ballot on the inside. I mean, there's so many things with mail-in balloting I don't trust, and nobody is going to change my attitude on it. I don't trust it. I think it's just a oversimplified way of not letting Americans go to the polls and do what they should. Show their ID proudly. Vote. And don't give me this garbage, oh, it's too hard to go to the polls. Well, I can't. Meanwhile, the day before, they went to Walmart or wherever and stood in line and maybe went to the bowling alley that night and bowled about three frames. Don't give me that garbage. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. When it comes to being an American... And doing the things that have made our country great, all of a sudden it becomes, oh, it's too hard. I can't do that. Our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, at all seven locations, we really appreciate everything they do. And what they do is provide you a lot of services along with tires. Now, you know they've got the best in tires. You know they've got all the tread designs. You know they've got all the sizes. But do you know that they've got the best in brake service? And they really have highly ta- trained technicians to help your situation with the brakes, front end alignment, shocks and struts batteries, all of this. And uh, they've got a lifetime tire and mileage care, peace of mind, tires. I mean, the best thing about going to Les Schwab is you know you're going to get taken care of, you know you're going to get great service, and you know you're going to drive away safely on the best. Stop in and see James and Buell, Dan on Pole Line in Twin Falls, Lane and Rupert, Mike and Jerome, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, along with the Twist family in Paul. Nice, nice people. And Trent, my buddy on Overland in Burley, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. I've got just a minute here, and I want to issue a little personal note, if I may. And this is not easy for me. Uh, to all of you that have sent cards, emails, and called me with well wishes from my wife, Deanne, I honestly can't thank you enough. 
It's at a time that is very, very serious. Uh, Her health is not, as of this morning, improving, and we don't know about any finalization as far as her coming home from the hospital. And uh, I said I'm not going to elaborate, and I will not. But I will tell you that I thank you, my friends, out in the audience for being so supportive. I really weighed the options about not having a program and staying with Deanne, and the doctors have advised me to kind of stay away a little bit, and then go. I go in at noon and stay till late at night. And uh, thank you for all your support. Right now, we're going to turn it over to CBS News. I'll be back in about seven minutes. And a good morning to you on a Tuesday as we start a new month. This is just unfathomable to me that we're already in September, September 1st. My goodness. Zeb at the Ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Don't forget all seven locations serving you in a very safe, clean environment and the best in tires. Your Les Schwab Tire Centers, you stop in and see them today. Along with Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1260. Three Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Right now, Sean, can we have a good word for Western Waste? From the canyons of the Snake River and all across southern Idaho, we're all in the Georgia struggle. Western Waste, services we care about our community, our resources, and the free land. Western Waste, services. Western Way Services, of course, you know about the route service once a week to come pick up your garbage. You know that they've got all the dumpsters if you're into cleaning your attic, your garage, or whatever. They've got them in various sizes. They'll drop one off. You fill it up. They'll come and get it. They've got all the porta potties I mean, the list goes on and on of all the services they provide to you. Western Way Services, you call them today, 734-6969. Wonderful people at Western Way. When I mention wonderful people, it's a good segue because it leads me to talk to you about some more folks that really care and are there to serve you with flexible hours to serve your family. And I'm talking about Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert. The number to call, 436-5636. Joel Heward, of course, uh, family and staff, always there to serve you and your family the best of possible support and comfort. And don't forget, too, always upholding the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert and Joel Heward. And Joel also serving you and your family at Morrison Payne Funeral Home on East Main in Burley. Another quick note, and I feel really, really bad that we haven't been over to see him for a long time, and I'm talking about Nick Greenwell and all the physical therapists at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, and the good folks that he also is in control of at Elite Fitness Center. Absolutely. Two great businesses, and Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation helping you get back to being you. That's right. All the exercises. Sizes, all the great physical therapists, the hydrotherapy pool, everything at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. Call today for an appointment, 678-1191, Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. There is a gentleman that is on our program on Tuesdays, and he is a very valued friend and knows all about energy or the lack of. And I'm talking about the man with the American Energy Alliance, and that's my dear friend Dan Kish. Dan, good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Zeb. I'm fine. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Dan... 
in the news, there are so many stories about energy. And right now, during political and this insane season leading up to voting on November 3rd, uh, I think politicians will say and or do anything to get that vote. But it wasn't that many weeks ago that Joe Biden, from his basement office, reading uh, old magazines of Life magazine, 1971, uh, made the statement that that he absolutely was going to do away with fossil fuels and fracking. However, gee, yesterday he said, I've never said that, and I am not against fracking. So would the real Joe Biden please stand up? Yeah, Zeb, it's kind of amazing. Um, uh, What we saw yesterday was him trying to backpedal on the positions that he and his party frankly, have taken on on America's energy independence, which we got last year for the first time in over 60 years. And uh, we're finally producing more energy than we consume. And it's because of fracking and, um, and, and a number of other things. Uh, but largely what's happened here is he's looking at the polls with people saying, wait a minute, you, you're telling me I can't use natural gas, I can't use oil, I can't use... And and so he's backpedaling. But the record is clear. Uh, uh, not only that, but something he hasn't back, backpedaled from is the fact that he wants to turn our entire electrical system by 2035, uh, less than 15 years, he wants to turn it over to uh, not using any of those sources. So... You can do it two ways. You can stop them from drilling for it, which he's advocated, or you can say you can't use it, which is what he's advocating still. And um, uh, it's fascinating because the whole reason under uh, Biden-Obama, we had a huge increase in production of both oil and gas in the United States, but it didn't happen on federal lands, on government lands, on lands they had any control over. It was basically despite them, not because of them. And um, it happened because there's a huge amount of private land in the United States, and people did what's in their own best interest, and uh, uh, went out there and discovered oil and gas. We've got slews of oil and gas under our federal lands, but he wants to shut all that down. Um, His plan calls for uh, no fracking on federal lands. Well, if it's okay for private lands and state lands, um, why isn't it okay for for, uh, uh, public lands? Um, They're denying the science. Uh, It's, uh, you know, believe them when they say they want to stop something because the people in control of that party want to stop this. Yeah. You know, help me, you have forgotten more about this subject than I'll ever know. I mean, I really uh, treasure your knowledge. But when you start talking about banning fossil fuels, and you start talking about banning natural gas in 15 years, how in the world, and I know 15 years to some might sound like a lot of time, but how are you going to transition the biggest and uh, most industrious and most energy-using nation. How are you going to transition that country in 15 years? Well, you're not, Seth. I mean, it it it, it honestly can't be done, um, uh, or or the cost of doing so would be so extreme that we might as well just everybody might must should just not go back to work because there's not going to be any work you can't uh afford the sort of uh, we built our existing energy system over more than a century the first oil well was drilled in pennsylvania in 1857 um we've drilled more oil wells in the united states and gas wells in the united states than the rest of the world combined um and yet we're not running out of it we're finding more and more and more because that's what happens. When you drill, you find more. Um, What they're talking about is everything from, um, you know, uh, uh, 
transportation over the road, yeah. big trucks. Uh, you, you're talking about, uh, about our entire automobile fleet, which is, I don't know, 200 million plus, um, including trucks and SUVs, which make up the increasing amount of our, uh, of our vehicles. Uh, you're talking about the way we generate our electricity. Yeah. Uh, and all of the end products that consume them. No more gas stoves. Uh, they're already doing that in parts of California. No more uh, gas furnaces. Um, you have to use a heat pump uh, if it works. Um, that's what they're talking about. I mean, the, the, the demand on just the natural resources to be able to forget about the, let's say we could do it. Where are we going to get the minerals? Where are we going to get the copper? Where are we going to get the rare earth minerals? Where are we going to get the lithium uh, batteries? Uh, I'll tell you where we're going to get them, because we're already getting them from China. Yep. So we're switching from American energy policy to a Chinese energy policy. And if anybody out there thinks that's a good idea, uh, they ought to go get their head examined, because they they don't have our best interests in mind. And 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 it's it's I, I, I'm sometimes just flabbergasted at the fact that we finally reach energy independence. We finally are all American when it comes to our energy. And these guys want to toss that all aside and hook us up with jumper cables to China. If they've got the end, other end of those jumper cables, anytime they want to pull those off, they can do it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it just blows my mind when I get to thinking about the logistics. And there again, this is your bailiwick. But when you think about the logistics of telling the American public, if Biden and Harris become president and vice president, God help us all, but if they become president and are in power, then making an edict to the American public, okay, by 2022, all farms and ranches will have to get rid of all gas-burning vehicles, combines, swathers, tractors, pickups, etc. That's our schedule of cutback. Then by 2024, we're going to have all trucks mandated on the roads that have to be running only on clean energy. You, you can't schedule disaster like they're going to do. Well, yeah, and the amazing thing is that you won't find one reporter to be able to ask him that question. That's the shame. They tend to do this. Yeah. Uh, and if, if they do get anywhere close to that question, they let them uh, off the hook. They basically just say, oh, we're going to do it because, you know, the America's great and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, they don't believe in America greatness. If they did, they'd be celebrating, as most Americans are, uh, the fact that we, we're we finally checked the box on one of the outstanding problems that we've had for for uh, six decades, which is dependence on others for our, for uh, lifeblood, which is energy. And um, so, so that's what we've got. We've got. Uh, we're just going to make it happen somehow. It's childlike. I think you've used that phrase before. It's it's childlike. It's it's like, well, why can't we just do this? without having any of the background to understand the physics, the engineering, the uh, economics, the, uh, the reality of how people live. I mean, I've got a 35-year-old tractor, uh, uh, diesel, and it runs just fine. Um, they're going to tell me I can't use that yep, anymore? Yep. Um, I, I, uh, there's plenty of people. Uh, other folks have brand-new equipment. Um, uh, all of a sudden, I've got to replace that with some battery-powered thing that uh, I don't even know how it works or how I'm supposed to charge it or anything like that, and I'm supposed to absorb the cost of that. And and uh, that, those are just little problems that uh, that aren't real um, uh, that we're complaining about. No, they're real-life problems. I do not understand or comprehend how any governmental uh, agency and or presidency can stand up there and look at the American public and say, well, you've got a 2005 pickup, and uh, in just a couple of years, you're going to have to start uh, getting rid of that and go finance a brand new $70,000 pickup or another new car, or to the farmers, they're going to have to get rid of all the swathers and the 
trailers and the combines. I mean, you can't, I can't even fathom the multi-trillions of dollars that would have to be spent to try to, try to go to a clean, what they say, energy impact uh, versus what we have now. It just can't possibly work. Yeah, well, Zeb, this is the old, uh, this is the old broken, uh, this is the old idea that somehow people would be put to work yeah. if we hired a bunch of uh of these leftist thugs to break windows and burn down the cities like they're doing. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, that's good for the economy because if they had destroy buildings and break windows, then we'll have to hire people to break windows. Well, you know, somebody's got to pay for that. And, and, you know, basically what they're doing is taking perfectly good equipment, uh, uh, that still has a lot of life in it, and and saying no more to that. Not to mention the transfer. I mean, think about the cost to transform manufacturing, and and again, all of it based on Chinese minerals uh, and production capabilities and everything. It's just like, oh, oh there's no problem with China. Oh, they're 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 good. We can make a lot of money by buying stuff from them. Um, Instead of hiring Americans to do what they've done uh, better than anybody else, which is produce energy to make us number one in the world. You know, there was an article in our local paper and an op-ed piece that was written by, and here's the uh, the title of this man, Brian Lawley, president and co-founder of Boise-based solar company EGT Solar. And one of the paragraphs in his story, I want to read it to you. Um, uh, while other industries have received the benefit, there has been no national effort to invest in the clean energy workforce recovery. In order to return America's clean energy workforce to its full strength and prepare the industry to guide us toward continued energy independence, the nation requires a plan that continues a tradition of energy innovation. So here we are energy independent, but these quacks and crackpots uh, with solar and wind are saying, well, we can do it. We can become energy independent. Well, there's no proof in the pudding that they could ever be energy independent. Well, and on top of that, uh, what he's urging is that taxpayers shovel out a bunch of money yep. so that they can buy. At, the, the question for this fellow is, where do his companies sell uh, solar panels come from? Where do they come from? Are they made in Boise? No. Uh, are they are are they made in Salt Lake City? Uh, uh, we know where they come from. China controls eighty percent of the world's market in solar panels. Uh, most of the most of the parts of the uh, windmills that are being put up are are a, the minerals certainly, and many many of the parts uh, are made in China for the windmills. Um, the inverters that uh, change it from uh, DC current to AC current uh, are all made in China. These are electric devices. Uh, so, you know, somehow we're supposed to, <laughs> taxpayers are supposed to reach deep into their pockets to subsidize uh, the installation of products that are all made in China, making them stronger. Yeah. This is we learned with the masks and the medicines that we've become highly dependent upon China. How about our energy? Add that to the list. That's what these people are urging. Seth. Do you see any change? Do you see any education as far as the American public is concerned back on the East Coast or wherever that they're understanding that green energy is nothing more than a old Western false front building? Uh, I don't see any breakthroughs, Zeb. I mean, the it's really, really hard because the media just continues to pretend as though that side of the story doesn't exist. There are stories beginning to break out uh, uh, about this as people look at it. And this is going to be one of those issues, by the way, that I think all of a sudden you'll hear a bunch of stories about. 
because they'll have discovered something that's been right in front of their noses that they that <laughs> that they uh, uh, have deliberately kept from being revealed. But uh, one story will break, and then uh, that'll that'll free up a bunch of other people to talk about it. But I, I think the president's been talking about it. I think some people have been talking mm-hmm. about the fact that a green energy future is a red China yep. energy future. And so yeah. you can either have American energy or Chinese energy. And uh, it's kind of that simple. You know, let me ask you this final question. Uh, well, first of all... All of its batteries, or most of its batteries. Absolutely. We have a factory here. Most of the batteries for Teslas come from China. Absolutely. We've got a quick call. Caller, you're on the air real fast. I've got limited time. Go ahead. Okay. How will this grain deal going to affect oil production? How is it going to affect oil production? Go ahead, Dan. No, no. no. Yeah, auto production. Uh, oh, auto production. Telling people uh, the same way that telling people that uh, they can't eat would affect food production. Um, because that's basically what they're saying is you can't, you can no longer eat, uh, and uh, you know ultimately at the end of that is a farmer, and there'll be no market for his goods. So it'll affect uh, it'll affect oil production incredibly. Not to mention the fact that there's all kinds of taxes they'd like to slam on top of it to sort of snuff the life out of it at the same time they're stopping its demand. You know, I misunderstood uh, the caller, Dan. This is a target on American oil uh, and gas industry, uh, just as they've targeted the coal industry before. It Make no mistake about it. Absolutely. I, I misunderstood the caller. He said, how is it going to affect the auto industry as far as uh, turning out all these electric cars and all these batteries? I mean, my goodness, I can't even think of the enormity of what's going to have to go through all the showroom floors. Uh, I'm sorry. I misheard that. I did, too. Uh, the, uh, the, the auto industry, uh, the auto industry will increasingly turn to Chinese products. Uh, like I said, the most valuable part of a Tesla, or any electric car for that matter, the most costly part of that uh, device is its battery. Those batteries are made in China. We we uh, control a very small part of the world's market on this. We can't make them the same way they can make them. First of all, they use slave labor for digging up the minerals and everything else. They control the lithium uh, mines and and uh, they control the cobalt mines, which are in the Congo. Uh, they bought into these. They've been they've been thinking ahead. While our while, while our guys seem to walk around with their heads in the air, uh, uh, dreaming about the future, uh, these people have been planning for the future by doing this. And uh, you know, try to just try to start a mine here in the United States, and you'll find out exactly how quickly. Uh, We'll be able to respond to this. Absolutely. Uh, it'll kill our industry. Absolutely. Dan, on a personal note, thank you for being such a good friend. Thank you for being on the program and your knowledge. God bless you, Dan Kish, and I'll look forward to next Tuesday. Thank you so much. God bless you, Zip. All right, sir. Thank you much. I really enjoy having him on the air, and uh, we'll have more with him next week. Right now, I also want to remind you about a great place to go eat. And I, I'm not kidding when I say this. I mean, every time we go in there for lunch, munch, or whenever, it's always delicious food at Denny's Restaurant. 611 North Overland in Burley, America's Diner. That's right. Pick up the menu, pick out what you want, and you will not be disappointed. All of it is very, very good. I'm a breakfast nut. I mean, everything I I like to eat breakfast for supper. (laughs) I love breakfast. Well, they've got all the great menu choices for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And all the dessert items, too. And really nice people serving you. So I urge you to stop in today at Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland in Burley. And again, another location at 291 Pole Line Road in Twin Falls. Thomas and the crew welcome you to America's Diner, Denny's Restaurant. 
Uh, another good note here, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a little frog in my throat this morning. Another quick note I want to mention to you about our friends over to Let's Ride. I've got to stop in and see these folks in the next couple of days. Let's Ride, 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the world. My, my, my. They've got all the side-by-sides. They've got all the four-wheelers. They've got everything for you to get outside, out of the valley, up in the hills, and enjoy yourself and have fun. Absolutely. Stop over Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays 9 to 2, and you'll look at that showroom and say, how did they get all these wonderful vehicles in here? Holy smokes. Side-by-sides, four-wheelers, all the accessories, and out behind, they've got a great service department to keep you running at Let's Ride. 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World, and it's true, this is where the fun is so. Old. I want to remind you also in that same area, they have a wonderful insurance agency over there in Rupert that absolutely is devoted to serving you, your family, and your business. I'm talking about Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Absolutely the best of life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits. All of this with a great personality of serving you. Absolutely. Call the number, make an appointment, 436-4424. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. We're going to go to the phone line right now, and I have never had this lady on my program before, but I'm going to learn and ask uh, perhaps some naive questions of I'm the love. problems with that number. Really? Um, how about... My name, Derek, uh, it's just, uh, it, it rings like six times, goes to messaging. Well, if you would, uh, 241-4208, is that right? That's the number that I have. You say four two one. You gave me two four one earlier. So I did say I did say two four one. I I agree with you. Two four one forty two zero eight. Try that, please. Okay. So we got just a lull. We're trying to get Kelly Packer on the air with the Idaho Association of Cities. Uh, Certainly hope the number is correct. I'd feel very much uh, embarrassed if it wasn't, but that was the one I thought that was given to me. And we'll try to get her on the air. So stand by. And uh, an Idaho state legislator? uh, No, she's with the Idaho Association of Cities. Okay. All right. Uh, we're still trying to get her on the on the air. Two four one four two zero eight is the number that we have, and certainly hope that will work for Kelly Packer. In the interim, which this happens on occasion, I would appreciate your calls at four three six two two four four one eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven. Give us a call. We'll talk about anything you want to talk about for this half hour until we manage to find Kelly and get her on the program. So stand by. Uh, any luck at all, Sean? Nope, just keeps going. It's going straight to messaging now. I'm just spam dialing it. Okay, and she is that the correct number? I need to ask you that. It m- must be, evidently, if it's going to messaging. And hopefully we can get her on the some air. Some guy, like I said, the message is some guy named Derek. It's, oh. It has nothing to do with Kelly. Well, no, I'm a little bit confused uh, in the number that you're calling. This is live radio. We're going to discuss our problems on the air. You're calling which number now to make sure that we're correct on the number? 241. Four two zero eight. Yeah, that's exactly what I have. Uh, I don't know of anything different, so uh, I guess maybe we're not going to catch her at that number. But keep trying, if you would, please. Interesting. Can't get a hold of her. Uh, calls are welcome. Four three six two two four four one eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven. I was reading a note in the paper this morning that said summer could give way to a bleaker fall. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm really sick and very tired of all the negativity about news regarding the coronavirus, COVID-19, perhaps the fall flu season, the fall cold season. I've had enough. 
So far, everything is a part of life. Now, this COVID-19 is new, if you will, to the certain things to worry about. But how in the world... Here's the first paragraph of this little story this morning. As the summer of COVID draws to a close, many experts fear an even bleaker fall and suggested that American families should start planning for Thanksgiving by Zoom. Oh, don't go anywhere. Oh, don't gather as a family. Don't cut the turkey. Don't sit there and pray. Don't give Thanksgiving. Oh, we got to be so careful. I've had enough of this. Absolutely enough. And then it goes on to say, but school reopenings, holiday travel, and more indoor activity because of colder weather could all separately increase transmission of the viruses and combine in ways that could multiply the threat. Again, I go back to the what ifs. We're so worried about the what ifs instead of the what is. I don't want anybody in the medical profession to call me and say, oh, well, we've got to be so careful. Why, we've got to quarantine ourselves. Why, we'll have to call Aunt Martha and Uncle Fred instead of going over there and having a, a turkey drumstick. I can't live that way. And I don't expect you to. You have to live all you can and milk all you can out of life. I have learned that so much more in the last couple of weeks. I believe we have her now. Thank you very much. The Idaho Association of Cities and Kelly Packer. Good morning, Kelly. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. Thank you. I thought for a minute we were not on the same page for this morning. (laughs) Well, I'm not sure. I I must have given you a bad number, and I apologize for that. Oh, that's not a problem. Listen, before we go any further, I would like you to tell me and my audience, we're going to treat this interview as one of education for me and the audience, what is the Idaho Association of Cities? What do you do? Well, we are um, the legislative liaison for the 200 Idaho cities that we have here in our state. Um, and we also do training and um, educational opportunities for the elected officials. So pretty much the way our year lines out here at the Association for our members is the first few months of each year is um, entrenched in legislative issues. Um, we, we have board meetings at the end of each year where our board will determine what legislative issues they want to support, which ones they want to oppose, which ones they want to remain neutral on. And sometimes there's not issues necessarily um, going into the session that they um, have their eyes on. Um, but as things arise, we, we um, communicate back and they kind of tell us our, their position. We are the ones that are the face of the cities there at the Capitol for them on their behalf and or organize with the mayors and city council members to come and testify if necessary those types of things so we we help organize and facilitate the legislative process for our amazing cities here in the state Um, then when we move into spring we typically have training events that regionally that we travel Um, of course this year that didn't happen Um, but where we update them on any policy changes that have happened in the legislative session that may affect them or that they need to be aware of moving forward in their management of their cities. In June, typically we have our annual conference where we have lots of different training from Budget 101 to planning and zoning to cybersecurity, all forms of different educational opportunities for all of the city's staff, um, whether it be public works or city administrators or clerks or treasurers and the elected officials. Um, We put together a a huge conference where there's many different tracks to help train and keep staff on top top of the the most current issues and or or needs that are happening. So what do you do? Then in the fall we do additional training and education. In election year it's typically the basics for the newly elected officials, um, but every year we still have training even on the off year where we focus specifically on any given item, either one that we've had a lot of questions that have have arisen through the year over, or that year, excuse me, over, or um, things that we've seen or maybe changes that have been made at the state level that affect them. This year, for example, our fall academies, which will all be virtual thanks to COVID, will be focused 
focused on planning and zoning. Um, you know, integrated planning and, and how to, to, to best um, work with counties on city impact areas and those types of things. So just we help try to give our elected officials, um, especially since many of them are part-time um, officials in our state, the tools they need to succeed and to help the cities thrive. Well, okay, that being said, what do you do in your spare time? <laughs> Um, can you spell that word for me? I'm not sure that I, I know what that means. You know, you lost me about uh, a minute ago, I mean, with all the different things you do. if Would it be fair to give a synopsis of what you do? Is basically you're helping cities to become better and more efficient, efficient through their elected officials on how they treat the public. Would that be fair? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Now, what and about... We help to, we help to um, connect them with the proper tools, um, depending on what the questions are in their given areas. Because every city is different. The needs are different. The residents are different. The ideals and philosophies are different. And so as questions come in, we try to make sure that we can help them find the right tools to, to navigate whatever the waters might look like. So with my naivete on this, and I told you the other day when we talked on the phone, I was going to treat this with my naive attitude so I could uh, understand it better in front of my audience. Uh, when a new uh, city council, let's say, is elected, and they're not really sure as to what to do, maybe they don't hold, have any old hangers-on, and they're calling you for how to run the city, would that be a fair assumption? Yes and no. Um, actually, probably more yes. We actually have manuals, too, that we, we um, produce, um, like city budgeting manuals, um, purchasing manuals, um, planning and zoning manuals, you name it, accounting 101 manuals. So we, have, we produce a, a number of different manuals and keep those updated based on the statutory regula regulations and the changes that we, we might see in the legislature so that they have those at their fingertips to, to refer to and to um, use as a resource in the day-to-day. -day. But, yes, we are here to answer their questions and to try to help them. We sometimes will um, work with them on a mentor situation, um, maybe another mayor or another city council member that's in a city that borders their, theirs or is in the same region so that might have similar, you know, concerns and needs. So, yes. What about the... Help them however we can, especially for nope. newer... Okay, Kelly, what about the difference? Uh, this is a question that just popped into my little brain. What about the differences of, like, your rural communities versus your urban communities? I mean, uh, like you're talking about small-town USA out in the sticks versus Boise or Napa or something like that. What kind of variation and how do you apply uh, your, uh, your supply of information and knowledge to those different cities with a different personality? Sure. I think that's a great question and a really important one, especially in our, our state. We are so diverse. Um, we, our board of directors is made up of elected officials, mayors and city council members from across the state. And we actually have right in our bylaws that there has to be a balance. It's a balanced formula, basically, that the, um, the president is rotated through the geographical areas as, the, as are the vice presidents. And, in fact, they work up. And so you our vice presidents are chosen from the different districts that we have so that you always have that um, rep representation from all over the state. Um, and then there's also past presidents that, that help keep that, um, that overarching balance between big and, you know, big and small um, throughout. And then we have district managers that make up our board from each of those districts as well. As well. So we try to get a very balanced footprint from across all of our, our sectors. Um, we have seven districts, and, and they're made up from, you know, the very southern point to the very northern point of, of the state and everything in between. And then um, that being said, um, at least me as a, a director here at, at the association, I don't know, I can't speak for past, but I started my um, civic service and, and, and what brought me here as a city council member in a very small town, um, small city in, in southeast Idaho, McCammon, Idaho, which is 20 miles south of Pocatello. Yes. So mm -hmm. That is, has always been in my 
the forefront of my mind as I've served both as a council member and then as a legislator and now here. There's quite often when we're having conversations that I'll say, you know what, that's great. That's a great solution for, say, a Boise or a Nampa or a Meridian or a Caldwell, but it may not be the best solution for, you know, say, a, a Moye Springs or a McCammon or a, a you know, a, a, a Rupert area, the Rupert area, the, you know, Rigby, any of them. You're right. So I do try to help as well, just from my own background in maintaining that perspective, but we also make sure that we have a balanced footprint on the board. You know, I really, uh, I was raised in a small town, and uh, I live uh, uh, south and e- uh, south and east of Murtaugh, very small town, mm-hmm. and it's always been my thought and consideration that rural towns, which are based very, very heavily still on agriculture and possibly will for a long time to come, that they don't get the voice, they don't get the support, they they sometimes are kind of leaned on by the bigger cities that look at maybe manufacturing and other businesses coming to their locale. And I just am afraid of uh, the rural towns and atmosphere in the state of Idaho being diminished. Is that a fair thought? You know, I think it's a fair fear, but I can say just from my own personal experience that I have not, how do I say this right? Do the bigger cities focus on their own business and needs? You bet. But I have seen, even here at the association, during meetings, when things are brought up and discussed, that that our current mayors in our, our bigger cities actually ha- are, at least currently, recognizing when our smaller city mayors and, and city council members share the concerns with, with a given solution that might affect them negatively, or when they, when they bring up additional information that hasn't been thought of or, or worked through when they've come to the final decisions and stuff. And, and so far I have seen a very collaborative effort, at least here in our association, amongst our mayors and council members to, to try to recognize that one size doesn't always fit all and that we need to, to be very careful in, in how we craft, um, whether it's a policy stance or a, a regulatory idea a proposal, um, and also our testimony to the the legislature. And and then to back up just a step, I will say that that at least, again, from my experience being in the legislature, again, we still currently have, I don't know what the new redistricting will bring, but we still currently have a really good balance in the legislature of of, um, farmers and businessmen, rural and urban um, representation. So... While you do have those louder voices sometimes coming from the bigger cities, I think that you have an equal, equally measured voice coming from some of your smaller towns and cities demanding to be recognized and, and not, not squelched. So. I have another thought that I wanted to ask you about this morning before our time runs out. And uh, thanks to COVID and all the related problems, many, many industries are suffering, one of which is the tourism industry, which is a big, big amount of money coming into the state of Idaho. How bad have our cities been hurt because of a lack of tourism this year? You know, Jeff, to be honest, um we probably won't see those numbers for another year to two years in, in reality because a lot of our tax base is about a year to two years behind. There's some lag time, um, whether it's on new construction or um, uh, actual population roles and, and industry. I do know that in some of, for example, in, in tra- our transportation numbers and revenues that we've been receiving so far have not dipped the way we thought they would. But they do expect them to still probably take an 11 to 15 percent hit overall in the coming years, which will be a dramatic hit. Um, and our sales tax as well, um, which we share, have some revenue sharing in, um, has actually been bigger than what they exceeded expectations. Um, but again, disclaimer: that being said, they do believe that some of this will see a. a, a a ripple effect down the road, and, and we just don't know yet what that's going to look like. One of the things that we've recommended, in fact, in the budget manual that we did for our fiscal year 2021, is that our, our managers, our city managers and mayors and, and, and council members, plan for about a 20% hit um, and try to find areas to cut. Um, 
to just to be safe, it's better to to, to plan from a, a position of of conser- being conservative, and then not have that that hit. And that's what happened with transportation. For example, they really thought we were going to get in the last um, quarter of um, 2020. They thought there would be about an 11 percent hit, and it actually only ended up being about a 4.7. So, again, while we haven't seen a huge hit yet. Um, we're still asking people to be very cautious in, in their budgets moving forward because we don't know what the ripple effect will look like. Absolutely. Kelly, one final thought, and i got to have you back because I've got a thousand other questions that have come up in my old cowboy mind. Uh, what about the growth? I mean, we hear so much about people wanting to get out of Dodge City, i.e. California in general, and other states that want to move here to, to the state of Idaho. Are these cities in your association, are they prepared for this growth? You know, that's another, that's one of the main reasons why our training this fall is going to be on planning and zoning, because we are one of the fastest growing states in the, in the nation right now, um, because we have such a well-kept secret here. It's such a beautiful state and such wonderful people and so many great opportunities that you're right, people are moving here. And so we have really started focusing this year on helping our city officials with future planning and with making sure that they're um, zoning uh, appropriately um, their areas, that they also, if they annex in, they're, they're thinking long-term and, and what the, the consequences might be on, in any given area, planning for water and sewer needs, et cetera. So that actually is one of the main reasons why that's our focus this year. Uh, t- training academies is because, yes, they are aware, and we are trying our hardest to make sure that um, – that they're not just thinking for today, that they are thinking long-term. You are a wonderful lady to talk to, and I really want to say how much I appreciate your time this morning, Kelly Packer with the Idaho Association of Cities. I've learned a lot, and I've got a lot more questions, so I'll be in contact and have you back in the future. Thank you so much. I would love that. Thank you so much, Seth. God bless. Thank you very much. Very nice lady, and I'm going to have her back. I'm going to keep her name and uh, number right there, the right number this next time, on file and get her on the air. Thank you very much. Oh, my goodness, it's time for the weather. The weather brought to you by the professionals. Who are they? Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company, providing accounting services to the Minicash area for well over 50 years. I'm talking the best of tax return preparation, tax planning, business consulting, financial statement preparation, retirement planning, all of this and so much more. And they have offices to serve you in Burley and Rupert. They are the professionals. Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. Cooler temperatures for today, but we will be warming up as we make our way towards the Labor Day weekend. Here's a look at your weather. We are expecting sunny skies, a little bit of a breeze out of the west at about 5 miles an hour. Expecting a high of 74 tonight, clear skies with a low of 48 tomorrow. Winds picking up just a little bit out of the southwest at about 10 miles an hour, expecting a high of 87. Clear skies for tomorrow night with a low of 52 as we look ahead towards Thursday. Sunny skies, high of 89, Friday 91, and Saturday midnight. That's a look at your weather for the Kind of a last gasp of heat for the summer, I guess. Good morning, and thank you, Gina. Appreciate that. Phillips Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. Don't forget, offices at 1710 Overland Avenue in Burley and 625th Street in Rupert. They are the best at what they do, serving you, your family, and your business. Phillips Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. Uh, let's see. Coming up next hour, we have a dear, dear friend, and that's Dr. History. And I cannot wait to hear where he's going to take us back into the pages of history this week. He's always got an interesting story, and we're looking forward to it. And uh, he's heard on this segment at Zeb at the Ranch, when we started this thing, I can't even remember how many years ago, we've got people in foreign countries all over the world listening and finding out more about our Western culture and everything. And that's coming up in just a few minutes. Doc history. Don't forget Patterson's at 421 East Main in Burley. Curtis and Lorena serving you. And these people have got 
all the no- I wished I had a tenth of their knowledge about electronics. I do. They know all about all the home theater systems and the video surveillance cameras, the car stereo speakers, complete sound systems, all the TVs from Samsung, Sony, Toshiba, LG TVs. I, I Really, the best thing for you to do is not listen to me. Just get in there. Go on in there right now. Patterson's Electronics at 421 East Main in Burley. The number to call, 678-6997. They are open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 6. Don't forget Patterson's Electronics. Really nice people. Uh, A lot of things have changed in my world now that my wife is in the hospital and... uh, I pray every day that things are going to start progressing. And uh, I know a lot of you, and I, I wanted to say this last hour. A lot of you have called, and a lot of you have asked me to return the calls. And believe me, I thank you for all your well wishes. But uh, I just I can't be uh, Hank the Handyman to get all these issues taken care of right now. So bear with me, if you would, please. And to our advertisers and our sponsors, a special note to you. I'm doing the best I can at getting all the paperwork you need on a monthly basis. I'm trying my best on a limited time. So, again, please bear with me. At 10.30 this morning, we're going to be talking to a dear friend of mine. And if you're in the horse business or want to get in the horse business, I tell you what, Jerry Zollinger from Zollinger Quarter Horse Ranch. This is a ranch, and their quarter horses have been featured in national magazines and a great tribute to the way the families put together all the top-notch bloodlines. And we're going to be talking to Jerry about their sale coming up, their production sale coming up on September 12th, so don't forget that. Right now, I'm going to take a little break for about seven minutes. I'm going to go let Dr. History in the back door, as a matter of fact, and uh, we'll listen to CBS News, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you. And welcome back, hour number three. I hope it's hour number three. I've lost track, and uh, we're going to have Dr. History momentarily. Zebeth Ranch brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Center's all seven locations with a very safe, clean environment and the best in tires, along with our friends at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. I want to remind you, too, about our friends, dear friends. They are such nice people, Matt and Kelly Wiggins, over at Greystone Crossing. And Greystone Crossing is an absolutely beautiful place for seniors to live with their friends. It's a 12-bedroom home. Let me tell you, it's brand spanking new. I've taken the tour. Oh, my. They put a lot of effort into this, providing also three meals a day, plus snacks, plus housekeeping and local transportation. Great days at Greystone Crossing for seniors. Call them for a visit. 650-4979. 650-4979. Greystone Crossing Senior Living at 1221 21st Street in Haber. And a couple of other friends that I want to mention quickly, 7K Metals. Don't forget, you can help yourself build your own financial security in future through silver purchases that come right to your home. Find out more about how to create a saving opportunity and a valued treasure for your loved ones in the future. Call Lon Hardy at 312-8699 or Sharon at 430-3259. Please tell them I told you to call. They'll treat you really good. 7K medals with silver purchases. You call them today. Time now for a dear friend. And he is a dear friend. Has been for a long time. Dr. History. Good morning, Zeb. How are you, my friend? I'm doing great. You know, move the mic just a touch this way. Toward there, you go just a little bit more. Yeah, if you would, it's kind of fuzzing up a little bit. Okay, how's there? You, perfect. Uh, I had a lot of calls. Many calls about your last couple of programs. Okay. They loved them. Thank you. So this is part two uh, from last week yes. about a guy named Matt Nelson. But before we start, i got to say hi to Tina up in Montana. She wrote to me, and also Brett, who told me all summer long he's been sitting on his deck 
listening to the uh, all the different podcasts. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, so he's gone through I don't know how many of them well, no, sitting Tina, out on his desk. Tina in Montana, is she listening live as we do I, it right now? You know, I don't know. Oh. I don't know. Okay. I just get the emails, and they talk about the shows. So. Okay. So here we are. I'm going to give you a little recap from last week. Good. Matt Nelson, at age 15, was on a cattle drive and survived a severe stampede. A few years later, who went to work for the Figure 4 Ranch. And we're picking up our story. The uh, foreman has sent him into town to pick up an eastern dude guy. His name is Gregory. Yes. Okay. So he's at the at the train station, and and this guy comes out dressed to the nines in eastern clothes, and he said, "Hi, I'm Mr. Gregory of New York. My father said some of you cattle boys would meet me here and furnish me an escort to the ranch." Cattle boys. Yeah. That went over like a lead balloon. <laughs> well, it gets better, Zeb. <laughs> so anyway, so Matt Nelson, he introduced the other figure four boys. They There's about four or five of them that had to come along just to, you know, just to see this dude. Anyway, uh, one of the boys suggested maybe they should have a little drink. Okay. Uh-huh. So Gregor replied, uh, oh, I'd like that very much. So the procession entered a saloon, and Matt bought drinks for his pals and the guest, and he then was told that it was customary to buy the drinks. Now, this he did willingly for almost a hundred men. <laughs> Such a display of sportsmanship made a good impression. Did you say one hundred? Yeah, made a good impression on the Texans, and he seemed like a pretty good guy uh-huh. so far. Now, Gregory and the figure four boys uh, filed out of the saloon, and Matt and the guest walked over to the hack, or the buggy, and Gregory climbed in the seat. Matt untied the team, then got in the rig, picked up the lines, gave a wild yell, and whipped the horses into a galloping start, (laughs) and the rig lurched forward. Gregory grabbed the seat to keep from falling off. Well... They got to the ranch, and pretty soon he came out dressed in uh, Levi's boots and a Stetson. I can just imagine you know, what all, he looked like. All brand new, oh, you know, just sharp. Stiff as a board. Yeah. So the new cowhand, he took to the work. He learned fast and never asked favors from anybody. All of the figure four bunch took a liking to Gregory, and soon they were calling him Greg. Really? Okay, so that's good. How old was this guy? I don't know. Oh. I'm going to guess maybe in his 20s, yes, early 20s. 20s. Yeah. Anyway, after a couple of months, he had learned to ride an old cow horse and shoot a gun and brand cattle. <laughs> Would rope. you want him shooting a gun around <laughs> Not you? Not around me. He learned how to rope. Uh, the cow hands kind of took a liking uh, to him uh, more and more all the time. Now, now... Basically, he was one of the, quote, one of the boys. Uh So the punchers figured it was high time for him to be given the trick wagon test. Now, I'm going to bet you've never heard of this one, Zeb. Okay. So the trick wagon, here's the way it works. The left side of the seat, okay, the driver sits on the right, had been worked over so the driver could trip a lever and cause the bottom to drop away. When this happened, the occupant on the left would instinctively grab for a bar placed at exactly the right place for a handhold. Uh Uh-huh. So then he would be running on foot, (laughs) hanging out of this bar. For some reason, this doesn't sound like a fun thing to do. Okay, well, it is. Uh Let me keep going here. Uh, So Gregory went to town with the boys one day. Now, there was a really pretty girl that lived there, and his buddy went with him and made the introduction, and since he was well acquainted with her, but what Greg didn't know was that this gal was not married. Anyway, uh, You're skipping over that real fast. Okay, well, it gets better. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so he's in there. He's met this, this pretty gal. All of a sudden, a great big tough-looking fellow was to appear on the scene at just the right moment. He would have a six-shooter loaded with blanks. You hope. Also, the trick wagon would happen to come along perfectly at the right time. Okay, now the cowboy knocked on the door, and it opened, and there stood this beautiful young lady. Uh, Introductions were made. Then his partner said he had to see a friend up the street, so he left. So as the cowboy walked away, the girl invited Gregory to come in. Well, he stepped into the room. Just then, a side door opened. In walked this huge wild man with a six-gun and a shouting, quote, You're the one who's been trying to bust up my home. Now, our hero, Gregory, (laughs) streaked out the front door. Uh, Just then, the figure four rig showed up, and the driver yelled, Greg, over here, just jump on. Just as the six-shooter exploded three times, 
remember their blanks. Coming back You'd toward... You'd better hope he got yeah, the right ones. <laughs> coming back toward the girl's house was the cowboy who'd made the introductions. He stepped right smack dab in front of the bullets and went down with a pitiful cry. Okay. Now, Gregory... <laughs> Glance at his buddy sprawling there in the dusty street, and with a leap, he landed beside the driver on the hack. The horses were whipped into a gallop. Uh, three more shots split the air. The driver let out a wild yell and lashed the horses into a dead run. Now, most of the people in town were lined up on both sides of the street, whooping it up. As, oh, they knew about it. Oh, yeah. Oh. As this chariot sped by, now came the time for the driver to trip the gadget. Oh, here we go. As everything under him dropped away, Gregory made a frantic grab for the handhold. His booted feet smacked the ground. He swung onto the bar, and for a short distance, his feet were running, but he couldn't stay with the pace. <laughs> now, this tired-out youngster finally released his death grip on the bar, dropped beneath the rig, and while he was recovering, several of the figure four cowboys rode up, had a good laugh as he sprawled there in the dirt. Gregory had passed the test. He was one of the boys now. Oh, that's a rough <laughs> test. That is. I Holy it was good. moly. Anyway, uh, so anyway, now we're getting back to Matt. He moved on into Indian Territory. In about 1902, he got a chance for more exciting work as a deputy U.S. Marshal. Uh -huh. So from a cowboy to a marshal. Matt Dillon. Yeah. So there was always trouble in a place called the Bocache or Bocache area. Does that sound familiar? In How does it spell? B O K O S H E, hmm. and it's about twenty miles from the Arkansas Arkansas I'm line. I'm not familiar with that. So I, I believe it's just, <clears throat> just a small town. Okay. Anyway, uh, it's not too far from Oklahoma, right in there, close. Uh, so that's where he became a deputy U.S. marshal. I see. Now robberies were common. Uh, Banks uh, drew outlaw outlaws like magnets. Seven miles to the east of Bokasha or Bokosh. On the Kansas City Southern and Midland Valley Railroad, citizens of the little town of Panama were holed up for the winter. It was cold, and anyway, two men chose this time to replenish their bankrolls. So they blew a safe in the bank, robbed the post office. Someone in town saw them make their getaway on foot. Now, that's got to tell you something right You know, there. sometimes the stories you tell about crooks, they're really dumb. Okay, so they're, they're running, <laughs> all right. Now, Matt Nelson was notified, and he told Deputy Bill Gray he had a little job he might need some help on and bill came along to be his assistant now learning that the bandits were afoot <clears throat> and had been seen leaving town to the north the lawman guessed that they would use the mile-long trestle uh, to make a uh, railroad trestle to make their escape so they jumped on the horses matt and bill rode fast for the bridge to intercept the thieves they tied their horses in the woods near the north end of the trestle as they reached the tracks matt said to bill now bill when we get toward the middle of the bridge you step down and hide I'll go a little farther and do the same. Uh, we'll let the fellows come on till they are in between us. Then we'll move in from both ends and make ca the capture. Well, it was dark night, and Matt was walking just a step ahead of the deputy. Anyway, Bill, he had stopped at the end of the trestle to wait. So they were had the plan, and Matt went on alone. He figured there would be less chance of the outlaws making escape from the center of the bridge where it was quite a drop to the bottom. So they weren't going to just jump off. Well, as he reached what he thought was about the center of the bridge, two fiery spots bobbed just ahead of him. The glow of cigarettes. Oh. Okay. So he quickly ducked down uh, and waited with the six-gun ready. And as the two shadowy figures passed him, he stepped carefully up on the tracks behind them and said, Hands up, no false moves. The men froze, hands held high. And then he went on, he said, Now just walk on and keep them up. Keep going till I say stop. My partner is up ahead, so don't try any funny stuff. You're between both of us and could never get away alive. The men walked along without saying a word. When they came to the north end of the bridge, Bill was waiting, gun in hand. <clears throat> Now they handcuffed the thieves and helped them mount Bill's horse. Then Bill mounted behind Matt and led the bound, uh, bandits into town. They took the prisoners into a building, searched them. Neither one had a gun. <laughs> Wait a minute. They robbed the bank. Neither one had a gun. And neither on one foot. had a gun. And they were on foot. Yeah. So they were wearing overcoats, these big overcoats with big pockets. Yeah. And it was bulging with loot. 
all, uh, in all their pockets. So picture this, Zeb. They have these big coats. Besides bills, there were silver dollars, half dollars, smaller change, including hundreds of pennies, and even postage stamps. How did they even run away? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, they dumped the loot onto the lap of the bankers and the postal employees and sorted it out, and the printers, prisoners were sent to the penitentiary. you got to be kidding so, me. Dumb outlaws. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, horse and cattle thieves gave law meant a lot of trouble in those days. Besides big-scale operators, there were those who only now and then stole an animal. Now, this is not one I'm going to bet you have never heard of, because I never had. There was a lawbreaker called a quail netter. Quail netter? Yeah, yeah. let me explain. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, there were lots of these men netting birds, especially in the uh, brushy sections of Southeast Indian Territory, and Matt was sent out to put a stop to it. So it was against the law to net quails. What year was that? About early 1900s. I've never heard that. I I have not either. Anyway, um, he was ordered to run down a a lead on a, a fellow that was suspected of netting quail. Now, this man was harmless, uh, one who would never be thought uh, as being very clever, in fact. Most of the crooks weren't. (laughs) Well, Matt had to stalk him for quite a while. At last, he uh, caught him in the act. Now, this is what he did. The fella had uh, had a net set up so as to form a U-shaped enclosure. Now, over this, another net made a roof. Now, from each end of the U, a long net fence uh, fanned out for some distance. Now this guy would get on a bald-faced horse as quail seemed less fearful of a mounted person. Now the netter, the guy, rode slowly back and forth, back and forth, so as not to scare the birds uh, into flight, so they wouldn't fly, they'd just keep running. Now gradually they were herded ahead and into the net enclosure. Then the man dismounted, moved in, carrying some of the fence wing netting. By now the quail had lost some of their fear of this slow-moving guy. And they huddled under the shrubbery inside the trap, and he closed up the entrance. He had several hundred of the birds captured in the net when Matt walked out of the brush and made the arrest. Now, the netters, this is what they were doing. They were shipping the game, the birds, to (coughs) markets in Kansas City and St. Louis. And something that was being done in many parts of the country in those days. But for some reason, it was against the law. And I don't know why. You know, I'm shocked. I had never heard that. Never. No. And so they were, <clears throat> pardon me, they were selling them to restaurants, yeah, right? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. I see. Anyway, but it was against the law. Is that called squab? I don't know that. I don't. I haven't heard that. Term. You've heard that, haven't you? I, I, I haven't. Somebody no. out there that knows that, give us a call. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead. So anyway, we continue on. Hundreds of outlaws in the eastern part of the territory hold up in a place called the Cookson Hills. Uh, but sooner or later, most of them had to come out. Uh, one of the most popular places they headed for uh, was along the Arkansas River in Fort Smith. Mm-hmm. So every so, no- so often they had to come out of their hiding right. in order to head right. to town. And anyway, so Matt trailed a wanted man to Fort Smith, and he usually went straight to uh, uh, a place. You've heard of Bell Star. You remember her? Yes. Oh, she had a daughter named Pearl. Well, and she lived in uh, in Fort Smith. And Matt would approach, his approach was something like this. He would walk in and say, hello, Pearl, I'm after so-and-so. Do you know where I might find him? And Pearl would say, well, all right, Matt, you come back at such and such a time and you'll find your man. And Matt would leave Fort Smith with his prisoner. Let's quickly call her. I've only got about 30 seconds. I appreciate your call. Go, uh, go please. You're on the air. Squab is pigeon. Thank you. Ah, squab is pigeon. <laughs> There you Did go. Did she say pigeon or chicken? Pigeon. She oh. said pigeon. Pigeon, okay. I didn't know that. All you right. can tell I'm not a connoisseur. Yeah, yeah, well, oh, okay. me neither. All right. Anyway, this this Matt Nelson was a remarkable guy. Uh, uh, this fine old gentleman was born in 1878, and he said he believed he would make 100, and at that time he was... Uh, uh, it doesn't actually say when he died, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you you lead us right up to the edge well, of the cliff and then back off. See, the problem is that this article was printed in 1967. Oh, and so he still would have been alive. Uh, call her quickly. You're on the air. I'll give you 30 seconds. A squab 
Bob is a young pigeon that is not able to fly before he's ready to fly. Cut it out. Well, he'd better learn in a hurry with these guys around. Thank you very much. Appreciate your call. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the story of uh, this, the title is From Night Herd to Deputy Marshal. How would you like to be sent to the state prison? And you're sitting there amongst all these tough guys, bank robbers, murderers. What are you in for? Uh, I was a quail netter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't mess with me. <laughs> well, or the two guys that didn't even have a gun or a horse to rob a bank. What did you do? You well, know, we just walked in and robbed I would. I would imagine the story about Matt Nelson. And his being a deputy United States Marshal and everything, I would imagine that that is easier to verify than some of the other historical stories. Well, and this was taken from an interview, Zeb. Oh, I see. So, yeah. uh, so probably, uh, I'm guessing the interview, it doesn't say exactly, it was in the 1930s, maybe 40s. I see. And then printed in Frontier Times in 1967. One segment that I've always wanted you to do, and I can't remember that we've ever done it, was on guns. You oh. know, like the Colt. 45 and the yeah. 44 and everything you know i've read so many stories and there's thousands of books i got in my bookshelves here that said in the old west it was tough to be a marksman with those things yeah well i did do a show on browning that's you know, right browning you did. A while yes back. i remember yeah. that but, yeah uh, and i thought i did one on colt at one time you I'm did happy. at one time but you know i'd like to discuss really you know uh cowboys uh in the old west they weren't really good shots and they no. used their gun just basically to scare things yeah right yeah. and uh, you know that's why when have you, you ever shot one of those old guns I haven't I have don't hold it out in front of you like this because you'll end up you with forehead? it in your forehead <laughs> <laughs> Well, even the black powder, you know, you shoot and you can't see whether you got yeah, the guy or not. Well, George Montgomery fixed my gun up that one time to where it was like supercharged, and I ended up on the seat of my Wranglers. <laughs> oh, it's fun, isn't but, it? But, you know, we ought to do one on guns. Some of the most used guns in the Old West. Okay, so let me just tell you, and you've been there, Cody, Wyoming. Yes. The Buffalo Bill Museum. Yes. Thousands of guns. Thousands Amazing. of guns. And do you remember the story of Jeremiah Johnson? Oh, yeah. John Johnson is yep. his real name. Yep. His gun and a knife are on display there. And he's buried uh, up there in or near Cody, Wyoming. Wasn't it a Hawken? I do not remember what his gun was. I think was. it was a Hawken, wasn't it? But I also saw a, I think it was a four or a six gauge shotgun. A four or, or a six, six gauge, and it was. I'm going to guess about six feet tall, and it, the the stock on the bottom was like a big piece of wood, and you placed it on the ground. You didn't hold it up to your shoulder. Well, how could you? You couldn't. So you placed it on the ground and pulled the trigger, and uh, <laughs> hopefully you shot. How many birds. trees got knocked down? <laughs> I mean, for heaven's sakes, uh, I, that would shoot a jet out of the sky. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how many birds you'd get with four one shot. or six gauge. Yeah, it was huge. What were the? the... I didn't. I didn't see the bullets or the oh, shells. Oh my goodness. But uh, the shotgun shell at a four or six gauge. Oh, I can't even imagine. Yeah. But, you know, like the Colt 45s, you know, the opening that's always made me laugh, and I'll tell you this real quick, and I want you to respond, of Gunsmoke. Uh-huh. You know, where they step out in the street, Matt Dillon and the bad guy and everything, yeah. and the guns don't have any kick. Let me tell you from experience, and if there's somebody out there that disagrees, those things will put imprints in your forehead. I'm telling you, they'll kick. Okay, so Annie Oakley, first of her show. Yeah. She's standing on her gun, or her horse at a dead run, and yeah. she shoots at a target. Right. Uh huh. And when I was about eight years old, I had a BB gun, and I forgot that it was cocked, and I shot that target really? right in the middle of the TV. And Ooh. so for several years, we watched TV. Everybody had a little dimple in their forehead, because, and my dad let me know that that was not appropriate behavior. How long was it before you could sit down and supper? <laughs> my dad and I had a very good discussion. <laughs> I'll God just, bless him. God bless my dad, yes. Oh, my goodness sakes. Yep. Really? You shot the TV? I shot the TV. Yeah. How old were you when you did this know, dumb eight, thing? Eight or nine. Oh, nine, my nine. goodness. You and the Christmas story. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, my. Hey, listen, what are we going to talk about next week? Quickly, I've only I got a minute left here. I don't know yet. I, actually, I've got a book on ghost towns of the Old West. Ooh. I might pick out a We've few. We've got quite a few here, don't we? Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so I may pick out a few stories about the some of the ghost towns in the Old West. Let's do that. I, I think I will. I like I'll that. see what I can find. You did an excellent job. And by the way, whatever happened to Gregory? 
<laughs> I don't know. Okay. But he became, I think he really enjoyed what he was doing. Okay. If he went back to New York City, he might not have fit in real well. The cowboy in the continental suit. That's right. There you go. Yeah. Thanks, Dr. History. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Dr. History, and he'll be back again next week with more on Dr. History. Thank you. Lee's Furniture Floors and More. Don't forget 459 Overland and Burley with all your mattresses for a good night's sleep. You be sure and get a hold of them today. And uh, while you're there and you need anything as far as window coverings, blind shades, they got them all. They've got the largest selection of floor coverings and they've got all your furniture. You name it. They've got it, and they are experts at beautification and the comfortization of your home. Jeff and the crew really pride themselves on answering all your questions and helping you. At Lee's Furniture Floors and more, 459 Overland in Burley. You stop in and see them today. We're going to take a little break for about three minutes. I'll be back. Don't you go away. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Thank you very much and welcome back on a beautiful morning. My goodness, September 1st, Tuesday, and I get a chance right now to talk to a favorite person of mine, and that's Jerry Zollinger of Zollinger Quarter Horses with their... 32nd annual production sale coming up on September 12th. Good morning, Jerry. How are you? Good morning, old friend. How are you? I am great. You know, it's really, honestly, I, I mean this when I say it. It's a treat to have you on the phone because I get a chance to talk about my favorite subject, and that's horses. And you've got some of the best coming up on that sale September 12th. Tell us a little bit about the sale. Well, it's, it's been a family tradition. We've had it, I think this is our 32nd one here at the ranch. Uh, we've actually had like 40-something sales. Uh, it's taken a lot of time to get uh, the, a broodmare band built up to where they're at. You're just, uh, I don't know why you throw me under the gun all the time, Dad, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> uh, it's, it's just, family oriented and then we try to keep it family uh we try to keep it uh, our customers and everything else is treated as family so it makes it kind of nice to see everybody in the fall you know one thing i want to say about the sale and about these horses and i've been saying this on the ads i've been running for you for the past week or so is that these are horses these are these are colts and fillies that have minds and they've got talent and they've got personality all bred into them and they know how to handle themselves in rocky terrain i mean you've got some athletes out there we do and that's we we kind of design the horse the way uh kind of the modern modern people is i guess is how you'd say it uh we don't have them big ranches anymore to ride them all day long and so we try to put a mind on a colt that you know you can turn out for six months and go get back on them and you left right off where they's at and it's taken a lot of time but that, that's kind of what we've designed is for you know the everyday person instead of just the rancher and i'm not cutting the ranchers out because i wish there's more of them but uh that's kind of what we've targeted and put a little color and new blood and old blood mixed together and it kind of levels things out Jerry, let me ask you, you know, there's uh, the horse business, <clears throat> excuse me, has taken a lot of changes and a lot of hits over the last decade or so. Uh, what about you? I mean, you're kind of, in a way, last of a dying breed to be a top-notch producer of top horses. I mean, there's not many of them left anymore, are there? No. And I'll tell you more here in two weeks how we end up. <laughs> but it, it, it's a year-to-year -year basis. That I understand. Really I've tried to cut back a few mares and and kind of maintain with you know the sale number between forty and forty-five head, and and it's it's tough. It takes sixty mares to make that work. You know, from getting one cut up or one hurt. But it 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 it's tough. The horses have taken a, a hit, but they're coming back. I see more and more people going down the road and stopping and petting horses and and i think they're finally realizing that you know that's another avenue out of this crap that's going on and it it's just a new way to get away from everybody and be able to 
enjoy life and think things through and have a clear mind when you're done. You know, Jerry, I don't think many people know or appreciate the cost of running a horse operation. I mean, the the top-notch bloodlines, all the mares, all the feeding, all of that. I mean, it's not easy to be in that business. No. No, it isn't. So you, you've got to, it's just like when I was picking up Rodeo Zeb, you don't get rich off of it, but you've got to enjoy doing it and love to do it and, and love the sport or love, love, you know, love the horse. Right. And that's kind of what's kept us alive is, you know, we, we love these horses. We love to look at them. We love to see the growth. We love to see a smile on somebody's face when they purchase a new one and, I mean, that's what keeps you going. It's not to get rich, trust me. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit, if we can, about the bloodlines. A lot of people say a horse is a horse is a horse. That's not really true. Tell us about some of the uh, great bloodlines that these Colts and Phillies are from. I was fortunate as a kid. I rodeoed and and competed on Leo Dry Speck of Pepper horses, which Dry Speck of Pepper was the son of Dry Dock. You cannot find them anymore. I can't find them. I can find grandsons and stuff like that. But that bloodline, that that old stuff, it's gone. The Leos are gone. Uh, we're probably the highest percentage of Leos in the United States. Uh, I still have a Leo stud, and I still have some Leo mares, but they're, they're getting old, and, and it's tough to replace them. And that is the backbone. That is what's kept this place alive is that, that old blood. Yep. Uh, I say old blood, but, you know, I remember them as like it was yesterday, but they're gone. A horse only lasts 20 years or 25 years, you know, in pr- productivity. And so I've been fortunate. I've got some mares that's producing that's 27 years old still that, that's got a cold on their side and bred back. And that's because of the maintenance and, and the bloodlines on them. You know, they just they last longer. Their longevity is longer. You've been the new blood. I consider the Pepto Boonsmoles, the metallic cats, the highbrow cats, the most popular ones now. And and it's it's they're set on the NCHA more than anything of of what's what's new, you know. And so I take them and cross them back to them old foundation mares and put some bone back on them and some you know some muscle back onto them and. And it seems to be working. So, well, what kind of customers? And I know the answer to this question because we've talked many, many times on the air and off. But what kind of customers really need to be attuned to your sale on September twelfth? I mean, what have you got that's going to really zero in on certain customers? What are you providing? Well, most most of my people, Zeb, come for the for the pedigrees. I see. And then uh, they they come they come because they've come for thirty years for more than any you know more or not and then they uh, they come because they've been good horses you know mm-hmm. they've been good minded and they've been able to do what they need to do they're kind of an all around type horse and that's kind of where you know the the people that we come we get new ones every year. We've got a call with a question and, and we find something new every year that somebody needs. So okay. We, try to put a little bit of new into it so jerry we've got a caller with a question or a comment call her quickly you're on the air go ahead please yes i just encourage you to keep doing what you're doing we need people like you out there and uh especially if biden gets elected we'll probably all be riding horses <laughs> with his energy program. <laughs> well I'm, I'm hoping that don't happen but uh aren't we all i uh, we're, we're gonna go as long as we can go that's for sure You know, Jerry, and thank you, caller, for that comment. That was nice. I appreciate that. Jerry, tell us a little bit about past successes. I know that you've got a lot of colts, a lot of stud colts and fillies that have gone on to be really top-notch horses in different respected fields. Tell us about some of those. Well, uh, the one that comes to mind right off the bat, I raised a colt here a few years ago uh, and put him through the sale. He was by our Bodies or Blue horse and out of a Focal Blackburn and Bread Mare, uh, and I'll get to her in a minute, but uh, the kid out to Malda, Cody Smith, has been very successful at that horse. I bet he's won over 150000 healing on him. Oh, my. Uh, and, you know, that's I don't brag much about him, but uh, that kid's done it. He's done it all from himself, and, and he's made a horse out of it, and he's, he's made a career out of it. He's training rope horses now somewhere, and uh, that's that's one success, but a lot of them go to the arena, and a lot of them are showed as uh, rope horses and barrel horses. 
had a few in the barrels. And, but most of them has been rope horses, calf horses, heel horses. And then they turn around and go on the weekend and go for a ride on them. But uh, them, that's, that's one that stands out more than anything. You know, I've been pleasured to know your family for a long time, and the care and the love and the uh, just absolute feeling of pride that you exude about your horses. And uh, give us a little background on the sale. How is it structured? What's going to happen on September 12th? September 12th at 10 o'clock, we'll have a kind of a preview. I do have two riding horses that's in there, and we'll kind of show them off a little bit and uh people kind of start showing up at about eight o'clock and walk through them and they're welcome to walk right through the colts and mares and they just kind of lumber around here and everybody kind of you know goes through and looks at them and then at 11 o'clock sharp we'll start the sale and it, it is live broadcasted also on dvauctions.com and uh it, it'll last probably a couple hours and and that's the gist of it. Oh, I tell you, you what. We'll all have a new home. I don't bid on them or buy them back or no sell them unless there's a problem, you know, or a cut or something that way. Uh, that the horse ain't sound, I back them 100%. So. Now, is there a catalog on the Internet, or can they see the horses, yes. pictures of the horses, Jerry? They can go to Zollinger, Ranch, Zollinger Quarter Horse Ranch and go scroll down to the, on the home page, scroll down to the bottom, it says online cat, or online, there, excuse me, online cattle catalog push that button and then go to the next page and scroll down and go online catalog and it'll bring the whole catalog up on it and then dv auctions is also on it you know, I can imagine that you, and I've known you all your life, uh, that you get really attached to some of these colts and fillies, right? This time of year is the worst time in the world for me, Zeb, because <laughs> they're not going to be here more than two weeks, you know. <laughs> so I have to say goodbye to them, and it is. It, it, I always say that I hate horses. Well, I'm wrong, you know, I, or I definitely wouldn't be going with what we're doing. But, yeah, you get attached to them from the day they're born. It's like opening a Christmas package, and then all summer long, you know, being able to watch them grow and, and the personalities of the colts and, and, you know, which one flies through the rocks or the, the – you know, the field the fastest, and which one can get out from underneath it, you know, you just imagine what they're going to be like as older. It, it's it's tough. It's no different than a, a pet breeder or anything that way. It, it's it's hard to let them go. Absolutely. You know, Zollinger Quarter Horse Ranch, uh, Jerry, uh, you must be very proud of what's been done in the past and what you're trying to do now because you've been featured in some national magazines, haven't you? We have. We've been in the German Western Horsemen, and I've got a big... We've had to take that and get it uh, translated into American so we could read it. <laughs> but I've got a big plaque with that on there. It, and, you know, we've been on the Western Horsemen, the Quarter Horse Journal, uh, some of the premier ones. And, you know, and it's an honor. You know, you wouldn't think, you know, a magazine, you know, I, I don't get to read very much, but... You, you don't think it's that big of an honor until you start reading through it and, and reading your article, and you know, and it it, it is. It, it's an honor to be able to have such good bloodlines and be able to keep them going. American Quarter Horse Association, absolutely. <laughs> American Quarter Horse Association. I mean, that says it all. The largest breed registry, I think, in the entire world. And my goodness, you've been featured and uh, honored by, for a lot of your great horses, haven't you? Yes. The, the year my my dad passed away, uh, Mr. Chamberlain from the AQHA came here and done an article on Wade. And, you know, he, we had it scheduled before the accident ever happened. And, and that was probably biggest honor I've ever had was that one. Absolutely. Okay, let's give all the particulars again. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, if you love horses, you got to be at this sale. Zollinger Quarter Horse Sale on September 12th. Jerry, tell us everything about the sale day one more time. September 12th, have a sale. Um, you can contact me at 208-670-3833. For catalogs or information on anything that you're interested in, I'll, I'll babble through what I can on them. And then uh, you can contact Linda at 862-3402.
or you can shoot me a message on uh, Facebook or whatever. We are on Facebook, and I post what goes on it on a daily basis on them usually. So, well, I want to tell you, Jerry. I wish I wish you the very best of success, and I'll tell you something, folks. These are good, good horses for sale. Top Colts and Phillies, Zollinger Quarter Horse Production Sale, 32nd Annual, up at the ranch. Oh, by the way, quickly, for those that aren't familiar with Oakley, tell them the directions on how to get there, Jerry. You blink, you're through, Oakley. Is that good? <laughs> <laughs> come to the- to, we're located 1994 South, 100 East, in the Oakley Basin. If you come to the town of Oakley, it's a four-way stop and go left. Stay, stay going straight east for four and a half miles and go south a quarter of a mile. We're on your right. Jerry Zollinger, not only one of the top quarter horse breeders in the United States, but a dear friend. God bless you, and I hope your sales a jam-up affair. Believe me, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you, Zeb. I appreciate everything you do for us. All right. God bless you and your wife. God bless you. Thank you very, very much. I, I've known that young man for a long time, and I have the utmost respect for him and his love of horses and the quality of the horses that they have. Jerry Zollinger and their big Zollinger Quarter Horse Ranch production sale, September 12th. Thank you. Are you hungry? Well, I know a place you can go. And it's delicious food. I mean, you'll never leave there hungry. They've got everything fantastic from sandwiches to steaks at Edis Cafe. Edis Cafe at 144 East Highway 81 in Burley, right across from the golf course. And they're open Tuesday through Thursday, 11 to 8, and Fridays and Saturdays, 11 to 9. And they also do catering and call-in orders. My goodness sakes, what are you waiting for? Sit down, enjoy your meal at Edith's Cafe, 144 East Highway 81 in Burley. I think we better get to the weather forecast. I I don't think I've been on time for the weather for a long time. Our weather being brought to you by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. Number to call, 324-7657. Or you can go to their website, scarrowsmeats.com, and check out all the marinated pork ribs, all the tri-tips, all the different flavors of bacon. (laughs) There's a bunch. And, of course, all the bratwurst and the breakfast sausage. The list goes on. On for any occasion, any occasion, or just on the weekends or during the week, you be sure and enjoy all the Scarrow's meats. Don Scarrow and the crew, they're very prideful of what they supply to you, the best of delicious meats. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. Cooler temperatures for today, but we will be warming up as we make our way towards the Labor Day weekend. Here's a look at your weather. We are expecting sunny skies, a little bit of a breeze out of the west at about 5 miles an hour. Expecting a high of 74 tonight, clear skies with a low of 48 tomorrow. Winds picking up just a little bit out of the southwest at about 10 miles an hour. Expecting a high of 87. Clear skies for tomorrow night with a low of 52 as we look ahead towards Thursday. Sunny skies, high of 89, Friday 91, and Saturday midnight. That's a look at your weather. Oh, we're going to have a little bit of a warming trend again. Might be the last hoorah for the summer. Our weather, of course, and Gina does a phenomenal job of compiling all those facts. We appreciate it. And the weather brought to you by Scarrow's Meats. 331 North Road, Jerome. You betcha. Or give Don and his crew a call. 324-7657. At Scarrow's Meats, they are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Wow, interesting program today. A lot of good people on. Thoroughly enjoyed uh, Kelly Packer with the Idaho Association of Cities, Dr. History, Dan Kish, Jerry Zollinger. And tomorrow on the program, I just uh, received word our guest at 10.06 is adios and not going to be able to be on. But 
We're going to have uh, Dave Bego, and we're going to have Colonel Kedrick Wills with the Idaho State Police on. And my good friend Jerry Voss has got a special little segment I've got to tell Sean about. He's going to be coming over to the station, and uh, he's going to bring a couple of guests with him uh, on the air tomorrow, Sean, at 10.30. And I'll tell you more about that a little bit later. But uh, all of that and much more, including all your phone Phone calls right here at Zeb at the Ranch, which are always appreciated. And uh, while I have just a moment before I have to wrap things up and get out of here and run to see my lovely wife, I want to remind everybody about your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. You know, they offer a free pre trip safety check. Maybe you're going someplace for Labor Day. And if you are, I suggest you run in there. They'll check your tires, check the tire pressure. Uh, visual wheel alignment inspection to see if you're going and tracking right, visual inspection of front end components, uh, brake components, and the visual inspection of shocks and struts and the battery load test. All of this free as a free pre-trip safety check at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. You stop in today, along with all the tires, <clears throat> excuse me, the best in brake service, front and alignment shocks and struts and batteries at all locations. James and Buell, Dan on Pole Line in Twin Falls, Lane and Rupert, Mike and Jerome, the Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, the Twist family, nice, nice folks over in Paul, and my buddy Trent on Overland in Burley. Nobody better your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Uh, one final note, thank you for all your kindness. Uh, there's just no way in the world I can thank everybody for all their thoughts and their prayers. And that right there means so much to me as my wife is in the hospital and we're certainly hoping for a very successful outcome. But to all of you that have sent me cards and emails and everything, I said this first part of the morning, <clears throat> excuse me, but uh, as soon as we have some kind of word as to how she's doing and getting better, I'll certainly let you know. But thank you for all your kindness. That'll wrap it up for today. I know I'm a minute early, Sean, but I've got to get on the road and get in to see how she's doing. And I'm going to say the way we wrap the show up, the way things were, are the way things ought to be. And we always end with these four words that mean the most to me. In God we trust. Please have a great day, and I'll be back here tomorrow morning at 8.06. Zeb at the Ranch, you have a good day.